How's it going, gents? Here we are today on a sports bike. Uh, as the title and thumbnail of this video, I'm going to be talking about sports bikes today. My kind of a uh, love-hate relationship. Uh, I will admit that um, the uh, the title and uh, thumbnail is a little bit uh, a little bit clickbaity um, because, as you'll know. I've owned many super sports in my life, many sports bikes, um, including one of these, a green one of these. This is a Ninja 636. This is my wife's bike. Um, so I'm gonna be riding this today. Took it for a little bush bash. I wanted a picture with the bridge, but now I gotta try and get out of here on this wet grass, which would be fun. She'll kill me if I drop it. But I won't drop it because I'm a professional. I have to put my gloves down here just to bloody put the stand down it's a wet grass as someone who has owned many sports bikes how many have i owned jesus um i don't really count like a ninja 250 as a sports bike it's gotta be like a super sport so a 600 or a liter bike i pretty much count as a or i guess a 750 or something um so i've owned a 636 two s1000 rrs uh a cbr 1000 rr and a daytona 675r i think that's all the super sports i've owned and I used to ride them every single day. My 636 was my only vehicle when I had it. So I'm, I'm probably going to have to turn traction control off, aren't I? To get out of here. Don't even need traction control on a 600 anyway. All right, come on, baby, grip. Ooh, look at that grip, man. On the wet grass up the hill. Probably doesn't look steep on the camera, but it's a little bit of a hill. Usually road bike tire would slide on this. How the hell did I get in here? I'm out here. Um, so I've owned a number of sports bikes um, and I guess uh, other than my or well, my wife's KDM 390 uh, let's get the shit off the tires a little skid to clean the tires off um, other than my wife's KDM 390 Duke uh, I've never really owned a kind of a naked bike or a super naked as you call it until my MT-10 SP which I have now so right now I still have a CBR 1000 R track bike it's really windy today sorry about the wind but uh not much I can do about it can't turn the wind off um so I still have the CBR 1000 R uh track bike and my wife still has this bike so I still kind of have two sports bikes that I can ride um but I have an MT-10 SP right now and I will have to say I'm freaking loving it um uh And that's the thing I kind of want to talk about is that um, I really, really like sports bikes. Man, it's freaking so bumpy the inside of that corner. You have to take it wider. Um, I do really love sports bikes, but I'm old. I'm an old broken man now. I've broken so many bones in my body from uh, skateboarding as a child, riding dirt bikes as a child now crash of motorbikes and stuff i've broken a number of bones and uh you kind of need a nice working body to really feel comfortable riding a sports bike so i've broken my ankle from skateboarding my wrist from skateboarding i've broken my collarbone for riding dirt bikes when i was a kid and i recently broke the sheesh out of my right leg both bones my leg tib fib and uh they kind of don't want to bend up anymore all these bones it's starting to hurt man i mean i'm talking about i can ride a sports bike fine please give me some room i don't want to go in the dirt um i can ride a sports bike fine for like an hour or two but then it's the it's the crouched up position really starts hurting man you start feeling it now after coming off like adventure bikes and uh of course the mt10 sp which is just i can ride that thing all day no troubles um it's, yeah it's starting to get harder to be able to sit on a sports bike for the uh the hour or two to get out to twisties to be able to ride the thing I, now when i was younger like when i was you know back in 2013 when i had a 636 i rode this thing every single day i freaking put tens of thousands of k's on it my s1000 double i rode to sydney and back in three days so one day rode up there thousand k's spent the whole uh one day i was up there riding and then I rode all the way back. And this was my S1000 before cruise control. 
Um, so I couldn't sit up. I can do a thousand k's, no trouble on an adventure bike, no dramas. Do it over and over and over on our adventures and shit. Do it off road, no problem. Now, when you're in the twisties, that's when it's great to be in this kind of position, lean off the bike and stuff. Oh, it's fantastic. But I mean, unless you live on a freaking twisty road or live in the canyons or something, um, you've got to usually do an hour or two of freeway to get there, and that's that's when it freaking kills you. Um, I will say um, what I do like about sports bikes and this is the thing that kills me is they are by far the best looking motorcycle there is super sports nothing can compare like don't get me wrong I think my MT-10 is nice looking I think a super duke is nice looking um, of course they're a privilege Yono is a nice looking bike but nothing freaking beats the Super Sport. And even when I was buying my MT-10 SP, I'm like, for a little bit more money, I could buy an R1M, actually quite a lot more money, but, um, you know, only, it's not that big of a step up for a bike that's a gajillion times better looking. Like, oh, I'm the first to admit, I am a, I'm a sports bike loving guy. Like, I think they look the best by far. So don't get me wrong. Uh, and a lot of the younger audience, they're just all about sports bikes. And I'm the same, man. When I, when I was, when I was looking for my first, you know, big, fast road bike and stuff, I didn't even think about like super nakeds. I was a hundred percent super sport because I love the look of it. And I was a kid, I wanted a loud, bloody, Larry freaking sports bike and stuff. So I understand you children watching my videos. Uh, I know that you're gonna hate this video because I'm bagging out sports bikes and stuff. But I, I was, I was one of you. I was one of you who was like, I would never buy like a, like a, a bloody uh, a Z1000 or something. One of those upright kind of super nakeds and stuff. I was all about the sports bikes and stuff. But these days, like as I'm getting older, man, I'm changing, I'm changing. The idea of sitting on a super sport all day is just like my worst nightmare now. These days, oh, geez, it's gonna be soon, I'm gonna be riding a GS, man. Then I'm not gonna be able to ride anything else. I'm gonna be done. Riding with Tom will be over the day I buy a GS Adventure because why would I ride anything else when I've got the most comfortable bike in the world? Like, they are that brilliant. But we'll get back on the bike and we'll talk a little bit more about it. There's a little bit more about the bad points of owning a Super Sport. Things that my wife is just now finding out for herself and it's kind of, it's fun for me because I've been there before. I've owned countless sports bikes and stuff, been through all their dramas and stuff. So it's, it's great now and I go for long rides with my wife and I see her on the freeway and just stretching the legs out, just sitting upright and just complaining on the center and stuff. I'm sitting there on my MT-10, I'm like, oh, I might just put cruise control on and, and rest my right wrist, wrist just that tiny amount. <laughs> It's, it's hilarious to me, because I've been there before. But, um, now this might be just an Australian thing. Um, or this might be similar all around the world. I'm pretty sure in the UK it's the same. But, uh, I know in the UK at least, but in, in Australia for sure, sports bikes have such more expensive insurance than any other real bike. A sports bike just instantly, even if you are a perfect insurance record. My dad, who's over 50, been riding for bloody, no, he's, he's over 60. My dad's over 60 years old, been riding for 40 plus years, like every day, 40 plus years. Perfect insurance record. If he was to buy a Panigale and try to get insurance, it's over a thousand bucks a year. My dad is 60, RACV bloody gold member of insurance for 40 years, no drama, still over a thousand bucks a year. Mainly for probably theft and a, and just because idiots crash them all the time because we do stupid shit when we're on sports bikes. I understand why they're expensive to insure, but it's still, the fact that if I was to buy an R1, a Yamaha R1, the standard, not the R1M, just a standard R1, and try and get insurance. Uh, me, I have a pretty bad insurance record, but an average average person, say you're 30 years old, you've got no crashes or anything, pretty good history, it's gonna be probably 1,500 bucks a year at least. Maybe upwards to two grand to insure that R1. Um, not an R1M, nothing special, just an R1. Uh, now, if you were to take my MT-10 SP, it's under 500 bucks. Why? Like, they're still unbelievably fast. 
you're still like there's still sports bikes in a way like you know my mt 10 sp has got the same motor it's got uh, pretty much the same suspension brakes everything it's just upright like why is there such a difference that's the crazy thing like my wife right now she's it's this is 1500 bucks for her to insure this bike this 636 for her is about 1500 bucks for her to insure she's a girl with a perfect record a bit younger she's you know 26 years old but uh she has a good record and she's still getting freaking please move over i know this is a small road but you're a wrx you're a rally car thanks mate uh she still gets screwed for insurance and she's finding out how much it sucks now all right i think i've done a zero to 100 on a 600 and a bit let's see if we can do it probably one of the hardest bikes to get a um a good drag time on is a uh a 600 because um as i learned from watching someone else drag race me some dude on a cbr 600 absolutely annihilated me when i went to the drags on a 636 and i asked him what he was doing and he said he was taking off at full rpm like that kind of rpm he was taking off at and he was using the clutch uh, i thought he was a maniac but uh i won't go full rpm it's my girlfriend's bike don't want a wife's bike don't want to wreck it but we'll do a little little launchy launchy probably could have gone a lot harder then but that uh, uh, gives you kind of the idea of a little pro tip if you've got a 600 you want to take off fast lots and lots and lots and lots of rpm use your clutch the clutches are strong on these bikes you're not going to wreck it uh, and they'll do that all day long Bloody not bad the old 636 lots of mid-range compared to like a cbr 600 uh, and this is the thing i love about sports bikes when you're in the right spot wearing the right gear not that i'm wearing right gear but like you know you've all set up that's when they really come into their own Jams. Oh, he's binned it with the trailer. The problem is, is you're very rarely in those conditions, so if you are a weekend warrior, then yeah, sports bike it up, man. Why not? Woo! Oh, horses are running away. Oh no, come over here. Hello, he's coming over. In the uh, in conclusion, I do love sports bikes. They're my, they're my, they're my dirty love. I freaking love them. It's not. I don't have a picture of an MT10 on my freaking wallpaper. I don't have two pictures of bloody adventure bikes on my uh, on my wall next to my next to my bed. You know what I've got? I've got two pictures of Super Ligeras, the 1199 and the, and the 1299 Super Ligeras, because they are the best looking motorcycles in the world. I am a sports bike lover. Uh, I hope that my wife keeps buying sports bikes so I get to steal them and ride them. I just don't want to pay for their insurance. I don't want to sit on them for the freeway. I don't want to commute on them every day. <laughs> I just want to ride them occasionally in the perfect conditions when it's a nice sunny blue sky day you've got nice twisty road you know you're wearing some form of protective gear that's when they are brilliant horse is like are you gonna give me some hay or some shit what why'd you stop here bruh <coughs> someone socks are here look like there was something in the sock and there wasn't now i've just touched a dirty sock gross a bit more bush mashing to get out of here. I've got trash control on. Listen to that. Let's stay in the field for a bit more. We'll, let's see if the traction control can sort out this this drainage ditch. <laughs> it's like it's, it's actually doing a good job. Need this traction control on my bloody 690 or something. Let's see if we can get up the hill. Wow, the grip of these bloody tires. Put this on a GS or something. Hey, good off-road. 